artists to album 22 as part of the band Greenness and it is such a pleasure to be with you today Sess how are you? Hey it's really my pleasure as well to be here I'm really good how are you doing? I am spectacular thank you and so excited about your song in the winter even though it's definitely not feeling that way outside. The song is so joyful and I am absolutely in love with that song, in love with the vibe that I've felt with you this morning while we've been chatting and, and getting ourselves organized before going live so that the world can get to know the woman behind the music. And so I'd love for you to be able to give people an introduction to the fact that you may be in Brighton UK right now but you didn't start even in that country. Yeah that's right so um, well especially in regard to that song uh, it's actually quite an old song I wrote it uh, in 2012 um, but I picked that one for for the purpose of this album because um, the themes surrounding the song relate very much to mental health and so I wanted it to be part of that project. Um, so it's a song I wrote uh, in France, uh, where I'm from. Uh, so yeah, basically the, the story behind the song is, because um, you, you mentioned the song being very joyful, but it's actually quite a sad story, but I, I try to turn it into something positive. So um, I lost a friend to suicide in 2012 and her funeral was on Boxing Day. So it was, very much in the winter and it was uh, a cold day, but obviously in the, cem the cemetery was full of flowers. And um, and also I got to see, it was a, like a, a childhood friend. So I got to see a lot of, of childhood friends there that I hadn't seen in many years. So it was just this really strange uh, combination of feelings that it was a really sad day, but at the same time, you know, the flowers were blooming and uh, and we were so happy to see each other, even though it was in such sad circumstances and everything. So I tried to put the feelings of that day into the song. And um, and that's why the chorus of the song is, I've never seen so many flowers blooming in the winter. And it's kind of the idea of, um, you know, overcoming grief and and trying to to be grateful for um, the people who are left and and for being alive and for like you know being able to carry on even when sad sad things happen like this um, so that's kind of what the song is about and uh, and oh yeah so it was around Christmas time and my dad uh, my dad's Christmas present was a ukulele so I just picked up that ukulele and wrote the song on the first four chords I learned on it <laughs> so oh. it was it was it was it came together very fast um and then when um when i showed it to graham uh my partner he wrote the guitar part for it and then recorded and produced it how convenient that you have a partner to be able to share it with and then he can be part of that masterpiece and what an incredible way to paint such a tragic experience of loss that is then you're still able to focus on the beauty of what's left but in terms of that topic itself how do we how do we help people not get to that place yeah so for me it was um it was a very um very shocking uh, experience because uh, it, it was a friend I hadn't seen in in quite a long time because I'd moved out of my hometown and uh, she'd moved out as well she went to San Francisco for a while and like I moved to England and like you know it was we were like early 20s and we were all like it's kind of that time where everyone is kind of moving 
out of like the hometown where we, we were all from to go and, and live our lives and travel and go to university and stuff like that. So we kind of lost touch with all, with each other and hadn't seen each other for a while with that group of friends and uh, like high school friends. And then, yeah, it's, 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 it's really sad as well because uh, because of that, obviously I wasn't aware that she was unwell because we, we hadn't been in touch. And, um, but also we'd, we'd planned to meet up around Christmas because that's like the one time that we all go back to our hometown to see our parents. It's around Christmas time. So we planned to all gather together actually at Christmas. And we ended up doing that around the, the event of her funeral, which, which was really sad because I didn't get to see her one last time. Um, so I think what happened after that is just, uh, I became a lot more aware of mental health, I think, uh, and a lot more um, kind of willing to open up about my own things as well and uh, doing that through music and just trying to, yeah, just to be aware that people don't always, like, cause I had no idea that she was unwell. Uh, no one, like no one really knew, like apart from maybe her closest, closest friends mm -hmm. um, who, who were seeing her on a daily basis. But, you know, people tend to like bury those feelings and not, not show them. And, you know, you might know someone who's like really happy uh, and, and bubbly on the surface, but they might actually be, be really struggling with depression behind closed doors and so for me that was something I wasn't really aware of until that happened and since then I've been a lot more willing to to yeah to just because I, I I used to be like that as well I used to bottle up my own feelings a lot and now I'm just uh, more willing to express my feelings encourage other people to express their feelings and um, do it through music as well a lot um, through songwriting and yeah, just having these conversations around mental health, basically. I think that's the, the best thing we can do to prevent um, those, those sad events from happening. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely tragic events from happening. Mm. And what a loss that this world experienced when a soul chose to not fulfill her mission here. Yeah by leaving early because she didn't think that she had it in her to be able to make it through. And the reality is that no one of us would be tasked with that which is in our hearts if we did not have the ability to fulfill that task. It's just mm -hmm. a higher part of us that knows what we are capable of than the lower part of us that is yet still to break through that surface tension on the water like the mosquito has to before it then spreads its wings and flies out of where it started just like you and your friend did before then coming back and I want to actually talk about that because you know I've had an incredibly tumultuous journey with mental health in two, three years before, I, I got locked up in the mental health system and I learned that the mental health system is not your friend. And to keep us focused in mental is actually to keep us out of our hearts, I believe. And I believe it's a distraction technique. I believe that the mental health that just keeps us in these circuits. Whereas when you're in your music, you're in your heart. And then you mm -hmm. drop out of your head and then you actually put those stories to good use, which then actually allow you to not only help yourself, but help others in that process. And so you're, you're continuing to do that. I just wanted to say um, that piece about my own story only because, you know, I am a very bubbly person. And mm -hmm. I know me better than I know anyone else. So I can only speak from that experience. But generally speaking, when I go online, I used to only do that when I felt at that space because authenticity is so important to me. And there's a connection issue, which is so fascinating because I used to wait. I used to wait until I felt like I could really bring it and then go live because I felt like to give from that place of depletion it, it didn't really fuel me or anyone else. And so I feel like there's that, there's a piece of illusion to this whole game that I 
bring in for a reason I'm not quite sure to be fully honest, Sess. And so um, whether you have a story or experience around the illusion or the veil, you know, painting yourself to feel a certain way when you really don't have it under, or if you've had the experience of really learning how to fight through the judgments of not feeling able to bring it, to be able to bring it when you have to because you've got a meeting scheduled or because you've got a concert scheduled. Like you toured around the UK and around Europe. You've done a lot where you'd be in moments of, you know, going through your own transformation where, you know, you still feel like you're in the cocoon and then you're coming into the moment of needing to be the butterfly. And you're like, I'm halfway done and I don't feel like I got it, but I'm going to do it because I have to. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, yeah, for like my, my music journey and my mental health journey, I've been so intertwined that um, it's, it's quite interesting to see how the more you open up emotionally, just in your life in general, the for me anyway, like how just to see how it benefited my my music as well my performance like the more you're willing to be vulnerable on stage um the the better the music and the better the connection with the audience is it was a really difficult thing to do at first it was really scary um but now i feel like yeah it's just uh, it's just like therapy <laughs> for me um to be able to do that so it's it's been yeah it's been a really positive journey for myself and hopefully for anyone who's listening to the music as well because I've, I've had especially this this particular song I had uh, you know really positive feedback from people telling me that they found it really helpful um, to listen to as well so or that it connected and resonated with their own experience so yeah it's it's just kind of validates um, this this decision that I've made to be a musician really. Mm. When did you make that decision? Um, well, I was I was always playing music uh, as as a hobby, I guess. Like I was always I was always doing music at the weekends and evenings from a young age. But um, yeah, I guess just a few years ago, when when I realized that this is really what I want to do, kind of like this is really my mission. I started. Um, I I was working nine to five job that had nothing to do with music, and I I left that job three years ago um and yeah i've been i've been focusing on on mostly on music and performing out since um and a whole load of other things that i do but like just basically reorganize my life around my music and my mental health basically like found found a a, a balance that allows me to be to have more time to be creative and to have more time to look after myself uh, which has been very positive because before that I was just kind of chasing something that was you know like this kind of stable thing that that wasn't good for me because it wasn't my calling and because it was also really exhausting and really stressful stressful job that I had um, so yeah it, it took a while to kind of find that balance but it's it's been really like I don't know, every day I feel like this is it, I'm doing it, and this is what I'm meant to be doing, so it's good. <laughs> I'm so happy that you choose to be an example of one who is willing to not just indulge in a passion, but to actually foster it and to give it your energy and your focus and to put everything you've got into it, to really bet on yourself, Seth. Mm, yeah it is it is it is, a, it is a bet <laughs> that's the word like it's it's um yeah it's again it felt quite scary to make that leap but I did it, did it really progressively and um uh, it's just like also being open to opportunities and just uh being curious because there's there are so many different ways that you can be an artist and so many different things that you can do as part of that um so I end up I ended up doing a lot of different things that I enjoy that aren't necessarily like my own music or my own project, but 
just side projects that I'm also enjoying and that are also um, creative. So that's perfect. Really I love that because you're still engaging that creativity and you're still making it work and you're still making what matters most to you, your priority, and you're doing it with the man you love. So what's that like? <laughs> Oh yeah, so yeah, um, the so the other half of Greenness is my partner Graham, and so um, yeah, it's it's really it's really great to work together because it's um, I don't know we have obviously we have like a very special connection. Um, it's it makes it easier to communicate um, what we need and what we want, I guess, because we know we can be completely honest with each other and uh don't have to like you know walk on eggs or like when we when we want to assert creative decisions um and yeah it means that we're putting a lot of love and a lot of passion in 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 our music i mean like we, we've been working on an album for the last few like last couple of years it's very much our baby we are just putting everything into it um and just yeah for like sort of practical reasons as well it's it's um it's easier to create when we have a home studio in our flat here so we just literally spend as much time as we can writing songs together and recording them right here um and uh and we make the, the artwork and the videos as well for for all our songs ourselves so it's just kind of like we have this little creative hub that is our home and we just make it all happen in here um which which yeah is much much easier by the fact that we live together yeah oh i love it and so you're looking pretty good considering your due date is on september 30th i think you had mentioned yeah yeah so uh so like in in the winter, the this the song that I'm contributing to your album is is not going to be on our album because um, we released it as a uh, as a song on an EP a few years ago already. So we've got two EPs out okay. um, from 2016 and 2018, and the album is 12 new songs mm -hmm. that um, have not been released before. Um, so it's kind of a different project. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's coming together really nicely. On the 30th of September, we have a gig with a five-piece band. So we've been doing rehearsals with the with the bandmates, and and then on the 1st of October, we will send the album to people who have donated to our crowdfunder. Oh, um, which is how we funded the album. Phenomenal. And at the moment, it won't be available anywhere else. Um, because we want to take our time to release it properly with with a PR campaign and everything uh, probably in the new year but uh, anyone who's donated to our crowdfunder can can get it early and and it's, it's still open actually the crowdfunder is still open so it's still possible to uh, to get uh, an early copy of the album beautiful well definitely i'll make sure that the link is posted below at this point in the video and then if you want to uh, share that comment over on facebook or the link over on facebook for your crowdfunding page Seth, i'd love for anybody that is uh, listening to this interview to be able to check out more of Green Ness's work and to support you in that process. I feel like I took away the thunder by being like, September 30th is your due date <laughs> and not giving enough context to just let you announce your own due date. So lesson learned. <laughs> no, it very much is. Uh, it, it very much feels that, that way because it's going to be like our, you know, it's going to be a beautiful big show with a full band for the first time in in ages like after not gigging for so many so many months right. so it feels it's like yeah we're really geared up to to that show because um yeah it's just i've really missed being on stage and playing with a full band like all, all we've been doing in in the whole of the pandemic has been uh live streams and uh with just the two of us Mm -hmm. and so being on a proper stage with, with an actual band yeah. is going to be pretty pretty magical oh 
I'm so excited. <laughs> and after listening to the song this morning, I find it so fascinating because in my own rushing around, I hadn't had time to understand the significance underneath of the joyful focus on beauty where I like to be because I like to float mm -hmm. around. But that groundedness in the pain and how that really opens us to be able to go up. You know, I, I'd love if you could actually kind of just touch on how being part of this music project, Album 22, which you can access album22.com. Album 22, what was it like to be part of a community when the world shut down our ability to connect? Yeah, so like uh, that's that's the one thing that I've been exploring uh, a lot in lockdown. Actually, has been yeah, like how to stay connected and how to how to fight sort of loneliness and isolation and and um, and look after my mental health in that in that context. Mm -hmm. And I found it really helpful to to connect with like especially the fact that with with Zoom meetings and things like that, we can connect with people from all around the world mm -hmm. and um, I, I found that really really helpful actually especially like a community of people who have things in common and um, why well, in that case everyone has contributed a song with the purpose of um, supporting mental health mm -hmm. so that's a really beautiful purpose and in parallel to that I was also training in um, um, community music facilitation also with mental health experts and like music therapists and things like that, also all on Zoom. Oh, wow. um, so it's been kind of like an exploration of how, how can we keep connected and how can we help people um, to look after their mental health in such a challenging time because if you're already struggling with depression and then you have to self-isolate and you're literally not allowed to see anyone, mm -hmm. uh, it's so important to have these sort of things in place to just to check in and to yeah to have to have a place to to talk to people even though you can't leave the house kind of thing so Outlet. yeah it's it's been it's been really good that initiatives like that have have emerged um to sort of compensate for the like lack of normal socializing that we would normally have yeah. Yeah, well, it's such an honor to have you as part of the project, Seth, and I love the fact that you were taking a mental health with music facilitation course at the same time as this project was coming around. So uh, definitely let's connect after uh, we're, we're finished with the live around that because there's so much going on that people are not aware of in terms of connections that are happening underground because it has to happen that way. That's where the roots strengthen themselves. The mycelae have to extend in the mushroom. The mycelae are the roots underneath the, mm -hmm. the uh, underneath of the surface and we don't see them but they cover there's miles of mycelae all around the world and we're actually our composition is very similar to a mushroom which means we have root systems that need to extend and our energy is a huge part of that and so Sess, if you wanted to uh in in our final uh at the final point in our interview on the live today um if mm -hmm. you want to just send out some energy to somebody in in words of encouragement hope inspiration that might be able to talk to that person that is in such a low vibing energy state that they don't feel that they can even do the next thing that would help them do the next thing that would help them do the next thing that would help them get where they want to go without needing to try to go from zero to hero is my advice just anybody that's in that space just gentle but Seth what would your piece of wisdom be um I think the main thing would be just to be kinder to yourself because most of the time I feel like what what holds us back is that we're just um we're just our worst enemies and we just you know have so much self-criticism that um often isn't isn't even like a part of us it's just something that we've absorbed from other people mm -hmm. um 
and yeah I think often we're just gonna get get this sort of looping thoughts negative thoughts in our head that just um feed themselves and and they're just they're just uh, completely unproductive they're untrue and they don't serve any purpose other than just using up all our energy and making us feel sad um so just just not listening to those voices and replacing them with with affirmations positive thinking focusing on on the things about ourselves that we like or you know sometimes we're in a place where we can't think about anything we like about ourselves then ask the people who love you why they love you and and listen to them and trust their answer um let it in like basically a lot just allowing the positive and allow it to, allowing the goodness mm -hmm. and stop beating ourselves up would be like probably the first step mm -hmm. um to kind of change this mindset and like even like on a physical perspective i mean i don't i'm not a neurologist or anything i don't know that much about it but i know that the brain is very flexible so sometimes you think you're stuck in a pattern that is really ne negative and damaging but actually you can um you can change it and you can rewire your brain in a way that instead of going into those negative loops you can you can go into those positive ones mm -hmm. and just being aware of that that your brain is capable of that even when you feel like you know everything's hopeless and and you're just stuck you your brain is always capable of of changing and, and rewiring itself in a very physical way um yeah you can you can change that chemistry and and then all of a sudden everything feels easier and everything flows so just be kind to yourself <laughs> be kind to your brain <laughs> be kind to yourself be kind to your brain understand your brain and your mind are separate and that the the brain is the physical component the mind is kind of mm. how we actually use that physical component so it's like a uh, software and hardware situation and yeah. the best example that i'd ever heard of the uh, retraining your neuro pathways is to imagine a field of grass long grass rye or whatever you want to imagine and then imagine that your dominant thought patterns are like trails in the in the tall grass that you've taken and it's a familiar path so you can take that path and you twist and turn but then when you find that you have a snake that lives in that path and you keep getting bit when you take that path then you want to start taking a different pathway and so then it's like no longer taking the well beaten down path but instead changing and then you're starting a new path that's not as familiar and the grass isn't as well beaten down it doesn't feel maybe as safe to take but at least the first time you take it hopefully you don't run into a snake again or if you do you know that you have the ability to change the direction of that grass being patted down and then you can really take your power back that way so Seth, thank you for bringing in that affirmation of i am capable that mm. is so significant i felt the empowerment i hope that somebody listening to this at home also felt that little spark in your heart of hope because that's really what we're here to do for one another with one another to activate one another and to remind us that evil is live backwards and now it is time for us to really be alive and to choose to live fully fully committed to understanding we've all got that bs that would have the grass be beat down in a direction that's not going to serve and that we have the power to redirect that to be in a situation of significant loss and grief like what you were in your song sess and then to turn that around so that the first time i ignorantly listened to it from the perspective of the rhythm that i was vibing to and absolutely loving to have completely missed the sorrow hidden underneath of that thank you for artistically designing that song in such a way that when i listen to it next time it's going to be a completely different experience Seth. Yeah, I think the, the way you reacted to it is perfect because I think it's on on the first listen I really want it to be a positive uplifting song. If you just listen to the music and the rhythm 
and the and the vibe of it is just it uh, sounds like a really joyful and soothing song and that's what I want it to be I want it to be a song of comfort but then if you look into the lyrics uh, it gives kind of a hint of what it's about um, and then and then yeah once once you know what it's actually about like once once you listen to the story then it takes a different like a maybe deeper meaning but I like that he has all this like it is very much designed in a way that you're not supposed to listen to it and be like, oh, this is a, this is a song of grief the first time you hear it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. absolutely skillful. Thank you both <laughs> yourself and Graham as well, your partner in music so and life too. So yeah. uh, thrilled to have had the opportunity to share you with more people today, Sess, and very much look forward to uh, you having more people's support for September 30th when you do your five piece orchestra set live and all the rest that's coming. If I were still in the UK, I would be there, but I have some friends that I'll be sending over your way so if uh you're watching this right now no but i send big love namaste to every single one of you today and says thank you thank you thank you thank you so much also i i, I just forgot to mention as well that the, that gig is going to be uh filmed and live streamed as well so actually you, you'd be able to watch it from anywhere in the world Amazing. um yeah yeah <laughs> so you don't have to be in brighton to see it Okay, well, that is great to know, and we'll look forward to supporting you with that, and we'll get that crowdfunding link up. So hopefully others can support the artistry that is helping to harmonize humanity one song at a time. Have a great day, guys. Toodaloo. Thank you. <laughs>